Some idea of the neutron's effect on a nucleus can be given by this simple experiment. Imagine that the saucer is the nucleus of an atom. One might think that the neutron would go straight in and out on the other side, like this. Now let us fill the saucer with marbles to represent the particles in the nucleus. If we let the neutron marble roll down into the nucleus, it will jostle the others but remain in the saucer. The nucleus has captured a neutron. It becomes unstable and gives off its excess energy as beta and gamma radiation. If the neutron marble enters the saucer with a somewhat greater energy, one or more marbles will be knocked out. Thus, neutron capture can eject particles from the nucleus and cause disintegration. Our laboratories, the world was disturbed by the strident voices of evil men. And the rumble of approaching war. But in 1939, atomic scientists made a fateful discovery. Professor Frisch, now at work in England, was closely concerned in this. Early in 1939, Professor Hahn and Dr. Strassmann in Germany found that uranium, bombarded by neutrons, gave rise to what appeared to be an isotope of barium, only about half the atomic weight of uranium. Professor Lise Meitner, who had previously worked with Hahn and Strassmann, was by then in Sweden. It was she who told me of their puzzling discovery, and together we considered the possibility that the uranium nucleus sometimes broke into two halves. We found that such a process, although quite unexpected, was indeed compatible with what we knew about atomic nuclei. If we were right, a great amount of energy had to be released in such a process, and I was able to show this experimentally. Hahn and Strassmann's evidence that the disintegration of the unstable uranium gave rise to elements such as barium in the middle of the atomic table was purely chemical and required a physical confirmation before it could be accepted. The uranium nucleus is unstable and radioactive as is known from its ability to emit an alpha particle. If a uranium nucleus could indeed capture a neutron becoming more excited and splitting into two approximately equal fragments, it was to be expected that a large amount of energy would be released in such a process, the fission fragments being hurled apart with great velocity. Professor Frisch obtained confirmation that this was so in an experiment essentially similar to the one shown here. Uranium was placed in the ionization chamber, which was placed over the end of a bombarding tube through which high-energy deuterons could be sent. The chamber was connected, as you see, to an oscilloscope. The trace you see here is made by alpha particles from the radioactive uranium. Now the high-tension set is switched on, and the uranium is bombarded by neutrons. On the screen of the oscilloscope, the fission pulses reveal the large amounts of energy released when uranium atoms are split. If each fission had to be provoked by elaborate apparatus like this for accelerating particles, there was no hope of deriving useful energy from the process. But each fission was found to be accompanied by the few neutrons. One neutron had been used to provoke the fission. The fission itself produces more than one neutron and is thus itself capable of provoking more than one fission and so on. There is thus the possibility of a self-sustaining chain reaction. The reaction can begin without any neutrons being supplied from outside since a few fissions are always taking place spontaneously. These would supply the fuse neutrons. While these facts were being investigated, the political high tension in Europe sparked over into actual war. Years of aggression had at last forced the Western democracies to challenge the attempt. <laughs> 
at fascist domination of the world. Under wartime security, research on the use of atomic energy was pushed ahead. What was the problem to be attacked? The possibility of a fast chain reaction suggested an atomic bomb. There are two isotopes which make up the bulk of natural uranium. The atomic weight of one is 238, of the other 235. Over 99% of natural uranium is U238. U238 undergoes fission only with very fast neutrons. Many neutrons are scattered by uranium atoms and lose the speed necessary to cause fission. So, a divergent chain reaction will not take place in uranium which is predominantly U238. U235, on the other hand, undergoes fission with neutrons of any velocity. It seemed possible that a controllable chain reaction might be achieved by using slow neutrons to cause fission in U235. Using pure uranium metal containing both isotopes, a pile was built in which uranium rods were embedded in a mass of pure carbon in the form of graphite. Neutrons produced in the uranium were slowed down by collisions with the light atoms of the carbon, the moderator as it is called, giving them a chance to cause fission in U235. A slow controlled chain reaction was achieved on December the 2nd, 1942. This first atomic pile was built at the University of Chicago. If natural uranium and a moderator were replaced by a small amount of pure U235, slow neutron reactions would give place to fast neutron reactions. Fissions would occur, but so many neutrons would escape before hitting another nucleus that no chain reaction would build up. But if the amount of U235 became larger than a certain critical size, a fast chain reaction would take place in less than a millionth of a second. This would produce a violent explosion. A simple mechanism for an atomic bomb thus suggests itself. Take two pieces of U-235, each smaller than the critical size, but which, if placed together, exceed that size. They are driven together and... So U-235 became bomb material number one, and its separation from U-238 became a war priority. The behavior of U-238 in a pile is also of great importance. Slow neutrons are sometimes captured by U-238. No fission is caused, but this nucleus becomes U-239. This is unstable. A beta particle is emitted, causing a change to a new element with different chemical properties, Neptunium-239. This new element is also unstable. Another beta particle is given off, forming another completely new element, Plutonium-239. Now, plutonium-239 has fission properties similar to U-235 and will be built up by this process of neutron capture and subsequent beta disintegration throughout the uranium in the pile. Being a different element, it can be separated by chemical means from the uranium and used also for a bomb. So, plutonium is bomb material number two. Huge plants for the production of pure U-235 and of plutonium arose in the United States. By 1943, it had become plain that Great Britain was fully extended in war production. In consequence, her nuclear physicists crossed the Atlantic to continue with American and Canadian colleagues the brilliant work already done. The main practical effort and most of its prodigious cost now fell on the United States, where very active research had been going on since 1939. The processes were laborious, and at all times, elaborate precautions had to be taken by workers on the atomic pile and in the chemical laboratories because of the ever-present dangers from gamma and neutron radiation. Danger signs and warning signals, lead and concrete shields, remote controls, detectors, protective clothing, these were the everyday equipment of the men who worked to make the material for the bomb. 
At last, in the desert of New Mexico, the first atomic bomb was set off under conditions of great secrecy. Thousands of calculations, years of work, reached their climax in this moment of dreadful splendor. Within a few weeks, the bomb burst upon Japan and the news of it upon a startled world, which has now seen this supreme destroyer in action five times in all. We are aware now of the compelling urgency of the situation created by the bomb. We know that war must be banished, or else our civilization may die, as Hiroshima died on that summer morning in 1945. The tale has been told in full by those who lived through it. A city destroyed in an instant, 60,000 people dead, many from flash burns, thousands more by blast, many from strange sicknesses caused by gamma radiation. 